Greg, thank you so much for coming on board the Transatlantic. I mean, it's like, I couldn't ask you for a better guest. You are a superstar. You don't need an introduction. And I'm really, really thankful. Well, thank you for having me. And you've already had some good guests. So I'm uh, you know, glad to be aboard your, your, your ship. <laughs> so as you know, at Transatlantic, we believe that each of us is an ocean of erratic thoughts, wild feeling, uh, crazy emotions. And so the goal is like to cross someone's ocean. In this case, we're going to cross your ocean. And hopefully I can uh, try to expose some of your like more inspirational stories and like, you know, uncover the journey of like your amazing career. So I'm going to ask you seven questions. Uh, like the seven seas and eventually we're gonna cross your ocean and have a beautiful journey. Okay, are we ready? I'm excited about it. Let's do it. Okay, okay, man. Okay, first question. Darkness in the middle of the ocean is very, very thick, pitch black. You can't cut it not even with the sharpest knife. It's up to your sense of imagination, to your skills, to your orientation to find a way through. Now, it very much resembles what happened in the mind of a creative. Yeah. Before, like a brief land on your desk, you had to start thinking, and it's pitch black. You had mm -hmm. to imagine, you had to rely on your sense of imagination and on your skills. Now, my question for you is this, and this is really like, makes me happy as a question. How mm -hmm. one of the best creative in the States find a way to an idea. Mm. First of all, thank you for saying that. Um, it's a really good metaphor because that's, I've, I've actually thought of that before. Like when you're thrown a brief, or thrown into a project, you are like in the middle of the ocean. You're kind of just swimming around trying to feel your way. I always start with like, what are we trying to say? What is the problem we're trying to solve? I kind of look at a brief as, as like, that's that life raft you kind of grab out in the middle of the ocean and you start pulling the string towards mm -hmm. like, you know, towards you a little bit, right. land on the place. So a really good brief is your best friend, a good stra strategist, a strategist. Um, Cause to me, 99% of the, the, the task is finding what's the, what's the problem we're trying to solve and What's the most, then it becomes like, what are we trying to say? And then you spend a little bit of time on what's the most interesting way of saying that. And you just come at it from a million different angles. But honestly, I think most people jump to the interesting way of saying it before they do their homework on really investigating the problem. It's, um, it, it becomes a lot easier when you have something interesting to say. I love the notion of the brief being your best friend. I think I'm a big fan of this notion of this statement. And I hope that's like creative, young creative yeah. back in Europe and in Italy can actually uh, make like, you know, like kind of like protect this statement because it's so important. You are like so on point with this, with the brief being like the best friend. It's, the, it's like back to your swimming in the ocean kind of thing. I always like when I get lost, I always just like, start staring at the brief and dissecting every line because there might be some something in there it just leads to something else and it's also easier to shepherd that work through if you can always point it back to the brief and how this is solving the problem no matter how wild the idea is great 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 start second question Twenty Thousand leagues under the sea is a novel by french writer jules burr now in the novel ships of various nationalities sees like mysterious sea monster, scary stuff. Fiction always carries an element of truth. The ocean is not a place for the faint of heart. It's a very frantic place. Things, same things could be said about creative land. It's very frantic, it could be terrified. We creatives see so many monsters mm -hmm. throughout our career. Now the most common one, the monster that everybody talk about is the one that come at night and steal your talent. I've hear a lot of creatives saying, oh my God, what if I wake up in the morning and I don't have the talent anymore? So what is your monster, Greg? 
Um, that one has never haunted me until you mention it now. I will. <laughs> oh, uh, I, haven't had, I haven't had issue with that just because I know through experience that I will always come up with something. Like every time I get an assignment again, dating back to when I was a junior, it's like this is going to be the time when I, you know, when they find out I, I don't know what I'm doing. But you, <laughs> oh, after doing that a while, you always realize you're going to come up with something. And my the, the, the way to get over that is just – Put some put your worst idea on paper so you can always come back to it. Then just start beating it. Then then once you know like you've got okay you got a safe one, now you can go wild. So um but, but to answer your question about my monster, um my so the question is like basically what are my fears? Yes. What is like? Do you have a fear? Do you have something that's you afraid of? Like you know in the creative like. I, for instance, like, I truly have the fear of, like, I mean, I hope I have a talent, and the only talent I have, I have the fear of losing it. Hmm. And maybe one day I wake up and I don't have it anymore, and I can't, I can't feed my family anymore. I can't, like... Uh, yeah, yeah, no, I, I don't feel that. I, I think, you know, you, I'm sure it's the same with you. If you after you've been doing it a, a, a while, you know that that feeling goes away. Um, for me, it's more about the stuff that's out of my control. Like, mm. Okay. I feel like that's in my control, so I, that's up to me. But it's when you know certain circumstances come up, and you're you, you know you get passionate about a piece of work, but something happens to it. You know, that's that has always come to me. It's from when I was a junior, and I remember where this started too, because I had like this amazing campaign that was you know gone through all the clients, and then like something came up, and I don't even know what it was, but wiped it all away and as a junior it's like your first thing it was going to make you famous and all this kind of stuff so every time after that, i was like okay what's the random thing that's going to kill it yeah. okay that's uh, awesome man look third question great man like we are crossing your ocean i already love it the atlantic is the last resting place of the titanic why everybody knows right like the titanic sank uh on april 14th 1912 it was a splendid effort of human ingenuity. It was a combination of dreams, ambition, skills, everything. Yet, you all disappear at the bottom of the ocean. You, Greg, are the mind of some of the best. And I'm not here like really like to, <laughs> to celebrate you, but gosh, man, you are the mind behind one of the best work ever done in the industry in the last decades. But I do believe that there must be a Titanic, a massive idea that you loved so much and it disappeared wow. under the ocean. Do you recall one? Um, There's so many. And you know what? For me, I, I, I just have to move on because I keep dwelling. <laughs> I blocked all of them out, out of my memory because if I keep dwelling on it, some, what, what will happen too is like you'll fall in love with this idea and then you'll try to make it work for a million other things and it just won't. Sometimes you just kind of like, oh, you know, um, and there's sort of freedom in going, just letting go of stuff. So I don't, you know, I have a lot of them throughout my career, but um, I, try not to, I try not to dwell on it. <laughs> that's awesome. One thing that helped me is to know that it happens to everyone. I used to yes. think I was first at one point in my career when I was trying to break through. It was like, oh, I'm not, I can't sell anything. Nothing ever happens. But that goes away. And there's comfort knowing that for every great thing you see out there, there's probably right. 20 maybe better things that got killed along the way. That's awesome. It actually made me feel like more comfortable because... You know, I, this is the first time we met, but like I've known you, like your work, I've admired your work for such a long time. And I remember like growing up in Italy, uh, mm -hmm. when your name started coming up, like in the Minneapolis days, like, you know, when you were working at Fallon, like everybody was like, you know, always like looking at your work. So it's like, it's very interesting to me trying to get into the mind of a creative like yours, trying to like truly like, you know, uncover every single like aspect of it. Uh, yeah, uh, I like being examined. It's <laughs> therapy for me today. <laughs> Four questions. Italian physicist and radio, radio pioneer Guglielmo Marconi succeeded in sending the first radio transmission signal across the Atlantic. And this proved the detractors that thought that he couldn't send a signal more than 200 miles. He actually did send it and he traveled 2,000 miles. If you were to 
to send a signal across the, the Atlantic right now to a young creative that tomorrow morning is going to walk in into the advertising industry? Uh, yeah. What would that signal be? Um, this has sort of helped me throughout my career emotionally is, and David Lubars actually told me this, I never forgot. It's like, don't let the highs get you too high or the lows get you too low. Wonderful. Yeah. Cause the, it's, it, it's a long game and you'll write it out. And like I said, the stuff that happens to you, that's just part of the career happens to everybody. When you first come in, the biggest shock is dealing with the fact that, that, you know, you have clients to answer to when you're a student, you are the, you are the client, you get to do kind of whatever you want. But there's a lot of hoops a piece of work has to go through in order to make it out into the world. And that can be frustrating, but, you know, it's part of the challenge. And yeah, it when it happens, it's all that more rewarding, you know. That's a great answer and a great signal. And I wish I could, like, wake Bjorn Morconi up and tell him, like, to send this signal across the Atlantic. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do it myself, man. <laughs> okay. I've learned so much during this podcast. I've learned about radio waves, Titanics, and... <laughs> fifth, fifth question, man. An international team of ecologists predicted an apocalypse date, and it's 2048. That's when the ocean will be completely empty. There's not going to be anything. The cause of the disappearance of the species is due to the overfishing, to the pollution, and to the habitat loss. Now, indulge me in this analogy. It's more or less what's happening in the advertising industry, right? Our pollution is the thing that we are all going through. We are overfishing. The consumer is like under a lot of pressure and we lost our habitats. During the global pandemic, we even lost the office. Do you think that advertising comes with an apocalyptic date? No, I think it will always change. The form of advertising will change. Um, it's, it's remarkably resilient if you think about all the errors that has gone okay. through. And, you know, I, I, I'm sure when TV came out, everyone thought advertising was dead and then that became the thing. And then when the internet came out for years and they still say it, that, you know, advertising's dead or TV's dead, it just, it just transforms. Um, I think what will happen is consumers will find ways to avoid it. So I think it's on us to not be so annoying and to respect people's attention more than we do. You know, you have to earn it rather than force it. That's so I think, you know, like, like every evolution, it will come back in a stronger, more interesting form and the, the, the you know, the week will die. So. Right. Mm -hmm. Sixth question, man. We are almost there. Like Sebastian said, the human world is a mess. So why not try living underwater? It must be beautiful. Now I like this like thinking because what it does, it reverse everything. It turns convention on his ads. Yep. Now, if we were to adopt the same line of thinking in the world of advertising, which we know is a mess, what should we try that hasn't been tried before? Oh man, this is like the era of that. Um, there's so much room for reinvention, people open for it. I mean, for me personally, I, I was in a massive in agency for right. 15 years in, you know, in that system. And uh, um, I did not think that I would ever like start something or be you know involved in something entrepreneurial. Now that I am, it's a whole different world, and it's like suddenly the the wind is behind me, and not you know I think I think the forces are kind of going against the big agency model. So I think that whole thing's going to have to holding companies I think are going to have to reinvent themselves or reshape or reform, or mm -hmm. they'll, they'll they'll simply not exist in a few years. And I had to say about your career, uh, when the news broke, that's like, you know, you were starting like uh, mischievous, uh, mischief, sorry, mischief, like a USA and no fixed address. I, I totally admired that because it, it showed like a great, uh, a great like, you know, resilience, but also like, it's so great to see a legend like yours, like to reinvent itself and like to continue the journey. And it's truly like, uh, to me, it's like you say two things, persistence, resilience, and, and never quit. And I remember like uh, your, your sentence 
the title when it came out, like it was like, don't dwell on it to just move forward. Yeah. And like, you know, that's why I wanted to have you on Transatlantic because it, this is so inspiring to every single creative out there. And as you say, like, you know, creatives, they're going to go into like low and high, low and high, but yeah. here, like you are the best example. Like after so many years, you still like, you still like doing it great. Like, you know, yeah. I looked at it as an opportunity. I mean, it was, it was a complete shock and you know, bummer. I wasn't like set up for life. So right. I, I want, I know I need to do something, but I didn't want to just jump into the same old thing because it was comfortable. I wanted to, like, again, like just this whole situation has wiped the slate clean on, on expectations and history. You know, it's like we're starting at a fresh new place and everyone's on the same ground. No one knows what's next because it's, this, we've never been through this before and business is transforming so it's like a, a perfect time to like what the fuck you know <laughs> try something you know something that you scares you that is calculated risk and i don't know i'm a big believer in the fates will take you where they want you to go it's That's worked out right. last question man we almost there for all our guests we have the same the seventh question is the same for all our guests it's like if you were to name a wind that blow your sails, what would that be? What would the name be? Um, uh, expression. I love that. Can you, can you tell me why expression? Uh, that's, my, that's kind of why I'm in this. I just like to if I have an idea. I like to share what's kind of inside. Um, and I, that's where the joy comes from, is just making something and having other people react to it. So that's what kind of keeps me up you know, keeps me going is I have this thought and wouldn't it be cool to see that in the real world and see how people react to it. And, you know, it's the joy of making. That's and awesome, I, man. I think if you get into it for that reason, you, you, and you never lose that, no matter what the scale or the size of the, the piece you're making, it will be equally rewarding. Man, like, you know, like, I'm so glad to cross your ocean and I bring home like three things, <laughs> which is like the joy of making expression and perseverance and resilience. And like, thank you so much, Greg, for being part of like Transatlantic. Thank you. This is a, a, a nice journey. Uh, I like what you've done with the ship. <laughs> thank you so much, man. Thank you.